A nice elevator ride starts day two here in Paris. Look at these palm trees. I feel like Paris is in the tropics or something, right? Yeah. French hot chocolate. You're right, Gordon. <laughs> Thank you. I had to sneak up to the hotel room real quick because I wanted to grab another little thing to throw in my backpack for today. But that means this is one of the very, very few times I have all to myself where I can talk without everyone behind me screaming and jumping and all that good stuff. Like I said though, that's not always a bad thing. It's kind of nice. It's like a little added memory to each one of the little videos. Um, yeah, today our plan is to head back into Paris to go to a more residential district, a little less touristy, a little bit of, like, getting to know the city. And I'm kind of excited for that. I think it's going to be interesting. My arch enemy elevator buttons. Good morning. Always. High speed traffic here in Paris. A little bit more of a residential place than yesterday. This is like, this is like the real side of Paris. Two kilometers and like 45 sex shops later, we're ready to get off the bus. It's kind of cool to be in this side of the city. It's like, not at all what you'd expect from Paris. And it's kind of interesting to see that this is a little more than just a tourist city. I swear to God, there are absolutely no traffic laws here in this city. Just like Germany, the streets here have the nice crossing lights, but apparently to the drivers of Paris, they don't mean anything because people just don't stop. No. Uh, we found a very nice Irish tour guide and now we're strolling down the old street of Van Gogh. Cool things in Paris. <laughs> so is it clear? He's walking through the wall. So he keeps going to the doctor, so he goes to the doctor and says, I don't know what's wrong. So the doctor says, yes, this is a problem. So he says, go and do two things. Number one, uh, start exercising more. And number two, take these two tablets that I've just given you. And if you exercise and you take the two tablets, then uh, you'll stop walking through walls. Of course, Leon does neither of those two things to a mental asylum. And so he has, he's gotten rid of this box who he really hated, and that's when Leon realizes, ah. I do también quiero. Guess where people touch the statue? <laughs> exactly. They're using our nice headsets here again to play really, really old music. Abuse. A Cablo Picasso's favorite restaurant behind me. El último viñedo de París. And the last vineyard in Paris. Oh, cool street. Oh. The military state of Paris. Look at this church. Back inside the church, everything is super gorgeous. And then we step outside onto these stairs here, and we get this awesome view over the top of the city. Love this place. A little bit of free time here in Paris. Working on a little shopping. There's guys with big guns behind me.
see him back there? Okay. I've been saying for the last few days that all these Spanish people here on this trip are crazy. But here, here we're pushing the limit. No, we're wait, in a French wait. cafe and they just ordered frog. And they plan on eating the frog. What the fuck is that? Hey, Stop it! Alright, frogs cut up on the fork. Uh, I don't know how to eat this. They're actually doing this. I'm scared. He is scared. Wait. I can only what imagine one. Alright guys, guys on the count of three with the frog. One. Two, three. <laughs> it doesn't have salt. These crazy Spanish people have convinced me that I need to try a little piece of frog. So I'm gonna try this. It doesn't have salt. Yeah, we, this is all. Yeah, that's like a weird fish kind of taste. Huh. We got the American flag here. Seriously. <laughs> she always thinks it's just a picture. Oh my god. I don't understand how she hasn't oh, learned know. yet. We're in the Louvre. Whoa. Perks of checking out the Louvre in France. Nice try. Um, perks of checking out the Louvre in France. Hour long bathroom lines. Good times. I just finished up in the bathroom, and as I was walking out, I found a guy who is like 40 years old, playing a Nintendo DS. How cool is that? I learned about so much of this stuff here in the Louvre in history class. All this stuff I promised my teacher I would never use. I have a tour guide now, I'm still not using it. Look at this picture behind me. There's a little kid here in the middle of this battlefield. But he's not just any little kid. He's a very, very scary, angry looking little kid. Check this out. Look at that one there in the middle. He's like tackling the other kid. That's the face of a killer right there. Crazy little child. So when you expect the Mona Lisa, you expect a few things. You expect one, it to be like the showcase of this museum. Two, you expect it to be big. What's behind me right now? The Mona Lisa and the That's tourists. the Mona Lisa. But then when we turn around in the same room, we have that masterpiece. Look at that thing. Oh. So much bigger. The Mona Lisa. Lisa. What should I say? <laughs> um, just say we're leaving the Louvre now. We are leaving. Estamos saliendo del Louvre. What she means to say is we're leaving the Louvre because I can Spanish. Look at this place. There's like a hidden area under the Louvre where they keep where they keep all the buses. This is cool. We just got up to our last restaurant here in Paris. We're coming here for dinner. And we get here so excited because we all have these nice wine glasses. And we all have these big flashes or pictures of wine sitting on the table. And then the waiters come and take it all away because we're not allowed to drink in Paris. Um, I would like the shrimps. The traditional burger. And ice cream. And for me the same. Our very nice waiter up there agreed to let me come in the kitchen with him. I'm excited. <laughs> The cooks in the kitchen asked me not to take any pictures, but the kitchen here was cool. And now I can officially say I was in the restaurant's kitchen in Paris. How cool is that? Dinner was awesome. It's time to go. That right there is our fantastic waiter tonight. Very nice guy.